Hey guys, it's Michelle with Women Who Wow, the online alliance for seriously driven women entrepreneurs. We have members in all 50 states and eight countries. And if you are a seriously driven woman entrepreneur, then you need to join us. So message me at m.me backslash women who wow. And I can send you a content journey to walk down uh, to see if you are a perfect fit for women who wow. So, or you can just message me whatever questions that you have. So I'm excited to talk to you today about five simple things that you can do to increase cash in your business and decrease frustration. The truth is business can be pretty frustrating at times, right? Um, there is a little uh, statistic that um, I'm determined to break, but it is absolutely uh, something that has not been um, broken in a really long time. And that is that 80% of small businesses do fail and um, and they don't just die one day of a sudden, sudden heart attack, right? Like businesses often experience a really slow and frustrating and agonizing death when they do end up passing. And so I wanted to talk with you about how to eliminate some of this frustration um, the, you know, business is not for the faint of heart. It does require all of you. Um, so I encourage you to pick something you really love to do and build a marketing plan around something that you love to do. Uh, this is actually a topic that I'm going to be covering with my Women Who Wow members next week. But I encourage you to find something you love because it does take a, a lot more than you thought it was going to take when you first started um thinking about an idea of being a self bosser and, um, and doing your own thing. And the frustration really comes from, um, doing all that you know to do and it not making a difference, right? When you've done all that you know to do, you've laid all your chips on the table. You've taken as many swings as you, um, as you feel like you know how to take and the needle's just not moving in your business. It's very frustrating. It's very disheartening. And, um, and sometimes it can make you feel like it's not worth it. And so, um, I have definitely been there. I don't speak on things that I haven't personally experienced. And to give you some background for people who are new to me, I um, am not in business to kind of tell my husband what I did all day. I am a financial comp contributor to our home. I am the primary breadwinner in our home. And so business is important, right? Uh, when I started my business, I had just quit my job. I was a new mother and I had $213 in savings. I did not have a backup plan. I did not have a trust fund, you know, just in case. I didn't have anywhere to go and uh, our bills needed to be paid. And so I put all of everything on the line and I don't recommend that approach necessarily uh, because it was super uh, scary and uh, it produced a lot of adrenaline and anxiety. And, um, and but I, I say that so that you know that if anyone can do it, I can, if I can do it anyone can do it and um and if one person can do it then you can do it too uh and i just wanted to share you know that be this was all for me this was before the internet right before people were really on the internet regularly um i had to market through direct mail uh in those early days because not everybody had an email address using direct mail and, and just the phone and so again if i can do it anybody can do it but i want to share with you five things that um, i feel like have been the most profitable um things that i've done in my business and um the first one it also eliminates frustration in your business right um some of this because it just works uh some of it because action does eliminate anxiety and um and the early days of business can be quite anxiety producing or if you go through a dry spell in your business it can be quite uh, anxiety producing. So the first thing you need to commit to, if you really want to increase your cash and decrease your frustration is daily action. And I want to be more specific, daily sales action, right? Your business is not something that you can feed weekly, right? Um, it's not something that you can invest in randomly. Um, your business will give you consistent income when you give it consistent action, right? Consistent, dependable, daily action. And when I say daily, I'm um, just so everybody's clear. I'm thinking Monday through Friday. Um, sometimes I do, you know, take action on the weekends and, you know, post a blog post, but it's really, a, if it's something like I just can't not do, right? I just can't hold it in anymore. But, um, but daily action is something that you can and should take. I used to have a, um, a thing of like, 
a five like sales activities or five things I would do every day. And sometimes I'd make, I'd play little games with it, but I would not uh, close my doors without trying to move my business forward that day. And so sometimes that meant calling on a prospect that I knew wouldn't be at home. I'd leave a voicemail or I'd send an email when it got to that stage of um, history, right? When you could predictably send an email. Um, but I would do things, I would do something every day to move my business forward, right? And I just felt like, you know, you feed your kids every day, you feed yourself every day. You know, this is something that you need to do is take that daily action. Um, not only does it actually start to create some compound interest in your business, but it also, um, it also it helps you eliminate anxiety, right? Because if, um, in, in my phrase or my statement, I, I always say this to myself and I say it to clients and women who wow members is... There's always something that can be done by you today. So daily action, daily selling action is absolutely critical to your um, to your success. So the second uh, action that you can take that will increase your cast and decrease your frustration is to be more vulnerable in your branding, right? Um, a lot of times people will uh, try to get you to do a SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunity, and threat maybe. And, um, and I'm not saying that not to do that. It's probably a, a valid and worthy exercise. Um, but you know, the truth is you can't beat me at being me, right? It, the more vulnerable that I am in my branding, the more I blur the lines between, uh, personal and business, the more that I can just show up as Michelle and sell and, um, show up as, as me in every different facet of my business, the more vulnerable and, and, um, open I am with my marketing, the more those lines are blurred between like my inner work and my journaling and my marketing and my selling, then I am more complete. I'm more believable as a brand. I'm more trustworthy. And I, I just ask, you know, I just want to put it out there to you that you can't lose at being you. As long as you're being really you, you just can't lose. That's a game you can't lose. You can't lose a competition of one person. Right now, things get all screwy when you do the SWAT thing, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It gets screwy because what happens is you're looking at all around and you're wondering like how I fit within this big complex system of other competitors. And my thought is there's no competitors at being Michelle Pippin. None. Literally. You can't beat me at being me. And so be more vulnerable in your branding and your marketing. Blur those lines, right? Blur those lines so that um, you are in a, as uh, Dan Kennedy calls it, a category of one. You can't lose when you're a category of one. So that's the second thing. So one, take daily action. Two, be more vulnerable in your branding. Three, you got to make sure you have a business plan that works numbers wise right? You got to have some realism in your business plan. Um, when I first started doing consulting, when it was really like the bulk of my income, I couldn't afford to be the cheap consultant. I just didn't have the reach to produce numbers, right? Like I, I needed to <clears throat> charge a lot of money for my consulting. And I did a lot, right? I, I took their business on as my own and they got amazing results. And I'm proud of that. And I'm also glad for it not to be uh, what I do anymore. Um, but I, my business plan, if, if back then I had thought I was going to start Women Who Wow and I'm going to charge $50 a month, I just couldn't meet the numbers. I just didn't have that level of demand for my work back then. And so I had to make a living on fewer numbers, which meant I had to charge higher fees. Totally fine, right? And if you have a bigger reach than I had back then, like you can maybe charge lower numbers and get more people, but you've got to make those numbers work. A lot of people reach out to me and their numbers just don't work. Their business plan doesn't work. They either, if they're making a physical product, the amount of time it takes to make each product plus the amount of, you know, material or whatever, plus selling, they're just, the numbers don't work. You got to make sure you have a business plan that works numerically, right? Numbers and math are an exact uh, science. So make sure your business plan works. In other words, you know how many of 
blank, how many of X, you'd have to sell at X amount in order to meet your financial goals. The fourth thing that you can do to increase cash and eliminate frustration is find a way to nurture your lurkers. I should know the statistic and I don't, but um, there is a statistic about how many people are interested in your product. They're just not looking to buy right now. And I think it's roughly like 80% could be wrong. It's a big number though of people who have found you out of interest or curiosity and they're going to buy one day but they're not buying today. And these people are showing up they're what I call in the women who wow world lurkers, right? They show up on your free content. They show up reading your blog, they comment, they maybe are your Facebook friend or a LinkedIn connection or whatever, right? These are lurkers and they're watching you. You got to figure out a way to nurture them, to serve them in a way that makes them think I got to get access to that girl, right? I got to get access to her. I got to join her membership. I got to pay her. I got to get those products she sells. I got to join, you know, I got to ask her to write my copy, whatever it is, right? Find a way to nurture your lurkers. You can do this through what I'm doing now, a, a free Facebook video, right? You can do it through blog post. You can do it through a print newsletter. Um, Sean Buck um, does an amazing job with uh, newsletters that are used mainly for prospecting. But find a way to nurture your lurkers, right? Because it's a huge percentage. I think it's around 80% that are willing to buy and are looking to buy. They're just not buying today. So you don't want to forget about them, right? You've got their attention you want to earn their trust. You want to be there when they're ready to make that sale. And the fifth thing that you want to do to increase your cash and decrease your frustration is hang around others who are as driven as you. One of the most unpopular in terms of feedback, but most popular in terms of number of times read, uh, articles I've written was about being on the treadmill of business, right? And there is a science behind the fact that we are the average of the five people we hang around with most. And you see this in a lot of different areas in your life. You see this in marriage and divorce, right? Um, when one marriage starts to topple, a lot of marriages around it start to topple, right? If you are um, hanging around a lot of happily married people, then um, your marriage is going to benefit. If you're hanging around a lot of single people and you're married, your marriage is going to um, be affected by that. It affects money, right? Um, when you, If you are hanging around a lot of people who are constantly talking about what they can afford and how expensive this is and they're going to try to coupon this to death or whatever, guess what? You are going to merge. There's a science behind it. You'll become the average of the people you hang around most, right? You want to hang around people who... Um, are aspirational a little bit to you. You want to hang around people that will help you grow. You want to deliberately associate with people who are um, who have what you want in life, right? This is something that works in all ways. It works with weight, like body weight, right? If you are, you notice that people who are thin and healthy and fit. They're hanging around people who are thin and healthy and fit. You bring in somebody who's not as thin, not as healthy, not as fit, and you put them in that same group, and you know what happens? They start to adjust. Why? Because there's a science behind the fact that we are the average. We become the average of the five people we hang around with most. So that's one of the reasons I created Women Who Wow. Like I wanted there to be a place for women like me, for seriously driven women entrepreneurs, not those play in business, not those who will say things like, well, you know, it's really not about the money for me. It's really not about the selling for me. Like I'm fine. And it's like, oh, I got it. Husband funded. Check, check. Right. I wanted there to be a place for people like me. I looked around at some of these networking events. I'm like, where are the women attorneys? Where are the women physicians? Where are the women badasses? Right. And I didn't find anywhere for them. And so I created something for them because we are the average of the five people we hang around with most. I wanted to bring together a um, collection, a curated group of women entrepreneurs who are killing it. And who are hanging around other people who are killing it, who are aspirational to each other. 
right? Who are cheering each other on and also leading by example. And that's where Women Who Wow was born, a desire for that. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys. If you would like to become a member of Women Who Wow, message me, m.me, backslash Women Who Wow, and ask me any questions that you have. And I will talk with you later on. Appreciate those of you who have been with me live, and I appreciate you guys watching it later. Talk to you soon. Bye.